Boy, no easy a foreign, you know. It's not easy anywhere else. But shout out to our people back in the Caribbean who think that this is the land of honey and milk and dollars flow and grows on trees like leaves. A rough out here in some places. I don't know what I'm telling you. Hit that subscribe button. Let's get right into this one and welcome back to SoFlow TV again. My family is your host with the most. All right. The way how this whole story goes down, right? We're going to get into the details, the meat of the matter, straight out of the New York Daily News. But we have scenarios and we have what the streets are saying happened in this situation. All right. So a sister listens in horror as a veteran JFK Airport TSA worker is shot on a Brooklyn street. She said, I heard my brother die over the phone. That must be devastating. The story says that a veteran can air a veteran JFK airport TSA worker was on the phone with his sister when he was shot to death on a Brooklyn street, two blocks away from his mother's home early Sunday morning. This is what the cops and the relatives have said. Donovan Davey was 45 years old. He was on his way to visit his mother after he was finishing up work when he was shot in the neck and in the leg on East 35th Street and Church Avenue in East Flatbush around 12.20 a.m. First of all, before I even go any further with this story, let me just say this. I lived in Brooklyn for seven years, right? And I made my mind up that I was not going to raise any of my children here. Shout out to my New York people. Shout out to my Brooklyn people. There are a lot of good people there. But y'all know what I mean. If you can do better, like if you know better, if you if you, that this is this ain't where you want to raise your youngins. It's not the ideal place. People do with what they have and much respect to that, but this ain't the ideal place. There's no way in hell you would catch me out here on East Flatbush near 130 not near near East 35th Street and Church Avenue at 12:20 a.m. just walking it's a dangerous area and you could get hit up right all right her sister said i heard three shots and i was calling his name but he wasn't responding at all he was on the phone talking to his sister while he was going on his way to go visit his mom, right? She heard the shots. She's calling her brother, Donovan, Donovan, Donovan. No answer. I just couldn't believe it. I heard my brother die over the phone. Police believe that the shooter snuck up behind him and fired a fatal shot. A NYPD spokesperson said, he was heading to his mother's home where his sister and the rest of the family were waiting on him. He was actually telling his sister like, yo, I'm out here, I'm coming, but I'm walking like a madman right now, I'm trying to get there. All right. Listen, there's a video out and I can't put the video here on SoFlow TV because YouTube has its rules and regulations. I see some people get away with posting certain videos, but every time I post a certain kind of video, they say it violates their community guidelines and they block your privileges. Like, for instance, I can't go live for like three months and I can't afford that because we have morning thoughts every morning. Right. Uh, Monday to Friday. So let me describe to you. There's a person that's dressed in black. The person runs up with a hoodie on face covered, everything black head to toe. The person runs up behind him quickly, fires a couple of shots and then runs away. And it is seen on camera. The cameras that took it look to be street cameras. That video has been released to the public. He was heading to his mom's house while he was talking with his sister on the phone. I'm on my way. He was a very family oriented kind of guy, right? The person was probably watching him from a distance, said his sister, who asked that her name not be used. Well, that's funny that she asked that her name not be used in the Daily News article, but in another, <laughs> in another 
interview she did in person with a news reporter. Her face is all over the camera. She's on camera speaking. Their final conversation, she said, was lighthearted. She said, I was saying to him, like, where are you? You coming? And he was saying, I'm walking fast like a chicken with my head cut off and that I'll be there soon, he said, according to this article. After hearing the shots, she ran outside in time to see the first responders performing CPR on him. It was like he was trying to fight, she said. Now, walk with me. If the gunman attacked him two blocks away from his mom's house, how did she run outside in time to see first responders? Or did he get shot and then continued to try to make it to his mom's house? I, I, I don't know. But two blocks away, you're not going to get a clear view unless it's on one of those streets. Like I used to live on Union Street between Bedford and Franklin Ave. And there's a, there's a clear shot from for blocks away so maybe it was one of those but anyways that's not the technicalities i want to get into with you i want to get into the three theories that are out there so she said after hearing the shots she ran outside just in time to see first responders performing cpr on him another thing that i say we need in jamaica is look how quick first responders got to him but it wasn't enough Medics took him to Kings County Hospital where he was pronounced dead. Kings County Hospital is actually where my first son, Tafari, was born. The people who did that to him, they were malicious, his sister said. He just minds his business. He's not the kind of person to be into other people's affairs. No arrests have been made yet in the slaying and no uproar has been seen. He worked for Transportation Security Administration or TSA as a security officer at Kennedy Airport for the past 17 years. Screening for explosives is was his his job. His family said 17 years. I bet the person who did it to him didn't even have a job. He was trying to aim for the 20 year mark and then go into his retirement. He had numerous awards from his job. He was very recognized at JFK. He loved his job. That was his passion. He knew how to catch bombs in the x-rays. He received certificates for how long he had been there and how good of an employee he had been over 17 years. His colleagues at the airport, TSA, they were shocked. A lot of them are saying, nah, can't be him. Anybody else but him. He, how? He's not that kind of person that could, how? Donovan Davey was a longtime valued employee taken from us far too soon in another senseless act of gun violence while he was off duty is what Jan I mean John Bambury the TSA federal security officer at JFK airport said on Sunday he will be missed by his co-workers and a whole TSA family they're planning a special ceremony for him and I don't know how that's gonna go down but you know it's them saying their goodbyes to a person who they worked with for 17 years he had no criminal history not even a traffic ticket clean as a whistle he was definitely not a street guy the police said and he wasn't involved in any types of those kinds of activities the victim's cousin also said the same thing he works every day and he is inside most of the time he's not even an outside person i'm not sure what's going on here but he wasn't one to make enemies and he had no known enemies he was just a happy-going guy that liked to you know joke a lot make other people around him happy and i've never known him to have a beef ever he was very passive like okay all right you're right you know the kind of person that will 
uh, take the fall or take the guilty just to have peace. If there was a confrontation, he would walk away from it. He was non-confrontational. The whole family is shaken up by this and we're all trying to make sense of this. Why? Why him out of everybody? How come? He was actually born in Jamaica, according to the New York Daily News. He was born in Jamaica and he immigrated to New York City at a young age. His sister said he attended the Medgar Evers College in Brooklyn. He is very intellectual. He speaks French and he speaks Spanish fluently as well. He would also correct me, his sister said, to make sure that my grammar was good. He loved traveling. He was planning on actually going to Thailand in January. Davy Slaying was the second fatal shooting in Brooklyn in less than an hour that same day. A 53-year-old man was shot not too far away on Decatur Street near Malcolm X Boulevard in Bedford-Stuyvesant shortly before his shooting. Medics rushed that victim to the Kings County Hospital, but he also could not have been saved and they did not release his name in this article. So, Mecca talk about this now. Okay, so, piques our interest because we are Jamaican and we cover Jamaican and stuff that uh, pertains to the Caribbean diaspora, right? Okay, walk with me. So he's on the phone with his sister. Remember I told you I've lived in this area before. This is not the type of area where if you don't know somebody, you just even if you know people, you don't not at 12:30 not by yourself walking through here, right? But if after living there for a certain number of years, I did it. I used to go outside late at night, but I would do it like I was on a mission. Go outside, get to what I need to get to, get my ass back inside quickly. Right, which is what he was doing, but he made a couple of moves, and these couple of moves are significant. So he's on the phone with his sister, he's heading to his mom's house. All this is traceable. Boom! One of the moves that he made, which is very telling, at midnight in these kinds of areas, he stopped at the ATM to get money somewhere in that area. Or close to that area, there's an ATM. He stopped at the ATM to get money. And then he stopped at the restaurant to get food. Hmm. However, I want you to pay attention to this. Because if somebody was going to rob him, and this was about a robbery, a stick up, trying to catch somebody coming from the ATM after midnight out in these streets, they would have ran through his pockets. I saw the video of him being shot. He got shot twice. Pow, pow. And the person ran away. They didn't run his pockets. They didn't put no hands in his pockets. They didn't try to find any money. They didn't try to grab his cell phone. They didn't try to look for a wallet. They didn't try to pat him to see if he had a gun on him. Nothing. They just ran up like it was a hit. They just ran up, shot him twice, and ran away. Right? This is after he came from the ATM. That man could have went to the ATM and pulled out $400, $500. And if it was a robbery, that would have been a lick to make $500 off one person early in the morning. So this was not about a robbery. This was not about a robbery. The person who did this wasn't hungry either. Or they didn't like the food that he was carrying because they didn't try to take his food. But bigger than that, they didn't try to take anything else off of him. Now, there are three theories out there. One of those theories is this. And before I say what the streets are saying, let me say to the family who might hear this, that it is not my intention to vilify your family member, I understand by all accounts, and I've read all the comments from people from Jamaica, people who went to school with him in the U.S. from uh, small days, people who knew him from way back when, people, you know, everybody has had nothing but good things to say about him. And most of the people who knew him also, not just his TSA co-workers, are saying the same thing, like, 
nah, can't be him out of everybody else, not him, because he was such a nice guy. So here are the three theories, okay? This is what the streets are saying. Theory number one, there's a rumor going around that somebody approached him, and you know when gunmen approach you with them links, you either play game, it's get down or lay down. Bad man thing, right? So he was looked at as a link where a package was supposed to slide through TSA. The package got caught up at TSA. But those who sent the package, whether he wanted to or not, those who sent the package believe that he either took the package and is telling them that the package got caught by security or they're mad because he didn't look out for the package and he didn't let the package slide through so they lost their stuff what was in the package i don't know could have been a large sum of money that they did not want to declare um, and it was illegal money that they could not prove how it was earned. Therefore, it was hard to transfer the money to where they wanted it to go. It could have been drugs, could have been whatever. I don't know. It was about a package. That's theory number one. This is what rumors are out there. I'm going to let you hear it first. So when you hear it out there, you can say, yeah, man, me hear that, right? Let me clear myself. I'm not saying this is factual. I'm telling you what is out there. Theory number two, theory number two is that it was about a woman, a jealous lover, somebody's girl he was messing with, somebody's woman he was messing with, her man had issues, found out about him, the Bonaman, and this is how that ended. And then there is a third theory. And I possibly, I believe that the third theory might be the real thing. Mistaken identity. Because if you look at the picture, the video in which he was shot, he himself was wearing dark clothing. It actually looks like black clothing or maybe it was dark blue. But in the night light on that video, it looks like he himself was wearing dark clothing. Hard to tell. I've had people run upon me before. One guy followed me through the grocery store. And as I was leaving, he said to me, he said, yo, you know, if somebody, he said, you ride a bike? I said, nah, I don't ride no bike. I don't even know how to ride a bike. But he was in a threatening posture. He said, you don't ride a red bike, a red motorcycle. I said, no, I don't ride bikes. I'm not a bike rider. And he said, yo, now that I'm talking to you, I realize that it ain't you. But fam, if somebody was coming to get the person I'm looking for and they saw you, you would have got it. I went away from that person with my my heart in my mouth and I, I, I could have been shot up because they were looking for. And guess what? I realized who they were looking for. And it was actually someone that lived close to me where I live. That's why they were in the area. And people always told me, yo, that's your brother. Y'all look alike. And I kept saying, no, nah, we don't we don't even look alike. I don't know what y'all see. Mistaken identity. Right. So it's. These are the three theories. The package he didn't let pass or took and said it didn't pass, whichever way that went. Or it's about a woman and her man, jealous lover, or mistaken identity. Those are the three. Either way, this brother worked for 17 years at one job in one career field. And he was very family oriented. As you can tell, by all that I can see, is a good person. Sad that he went out this way, just shot down in the middle of the street like a dog. Not even dog get that treatment, you know. Um, I wish his family healing and strength to take them through this. It's rough losing a family member, especially losing one of the stronger ones in your family. I don't know what else to say. It's the times we're living in, man. It's the times we're living in and none of us are immune to this. So stay vigilant out there, all right, and stay safe. I'll catch you on the next video. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about this, and we'll talk. I'm out. Peace. 
It's Eat Good TV, y'all. If you like Jamaican food, but you're struggling to cook it the right way, then here's a channel that gives it to you step by step. You are guaranteed to be able to cook Jamaican food like a real Jamaican from this channel called Eat Good TV. Go over to Eat Good TV, hit that subscribe button, and try cooking one of those meals. She is real calm about how she does her stuff, and she makes sure that you get all the ingredients right. Eat Good TV. Hit that subscribe button over there and tell them SoFlow TV sent you. I've cooked a couple of meals off of Eat Good TV. Not because I can't cook Jamaican food because I am a Jamaican myself, but because sometimes I like to see something that I like cooked a different way. So I'm about to tell the lady that she can't cook because that is not how you cook it. We all cook it different way. Just go to Eat Good TV, hit that subscribe button and tell her I sent you.